Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the podcast. This is Behind Relationship Goals and I am Fofo. And I am Bones. <laughs> so what do we have for this episode? This is a topic that I would say we lightly dabbled into before and we decided, oh, let's not get into it just yet. And I think this is the perfect time to actually talk about it because... You know, we're just at home anyways, and it's not like we're going to feel these things anytime soon, I guess. And before we bluntly state the topic, I think the color theme for this episode is... Green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> green is, with envy. Is green. Green with envy. So explain, Bones. Expound. Why green with envy? Bakit ako yung mag-explain? Ikaw kaya mag-explain. Ikaw nag-bring up eh. Oh, okay. So, well... Green, obviously, well, not maybe not that obvious, but green represents envy. And for this episode, we would like to discuss jealousy because as we look back at our previous podcasts, we realized that we just glanced over this topic. But obviously, in any relationship, there is jealousy, and that's a factor that a lot of people face, and it's become like parang pinagawaya ng mga couples, though. Bones. More often than not. Yeah, it's a huge issue, I would say. I would say in most uh, couples and friends that I've seen, jealousy has popped up numerous times and in quite explosive fashions. How explosive? Like what? Explosive, ex- like explosive fights. It could okay. become explosive conclusions. I mean, you and I know that we've had friends and experiences. Mm-hmm. We see it in teleseries, yeah. movies, media, that this issue of jealousy can lead to breakups it can lead to new relationships (laughs) to certain extents it's a huge deal yeah for relationships and i think it's about time that we really kind of deep dive into this share our own experiences because i honestly believe that no relationship is exempt from having to deal with this issue some may be less Others have to deal with it big time. Malay mo, as we're telling these stories, we suddenly decide na, ah, selosa pala si Bones. Or baka, sobrang seloso pala si Fofo. Baka may Hindi mo lang ka alam. sa akin. Yeah, and that's been a running theme in our podcast, especially when it comes to relationships. May mga realizations rin kami. As honest as we are with one another, it doesn't mean that there's an opportunity to tell all the stories and all the feelings. So in a podcast setting, means and may mga stories at mga kwento na lumalabas that shocks us and surprises us. And it has happened quite a number of times. Oh yeah, no, it's happened quite often, at least once in a podcast, I'd say. Okay, so if we're gonna start this, I think everybody was wondering, how jealous of a person are you? Because I think that's where everything starts. Like, like, would you say you're a jealous person? Like me just gauging myself? Yes, just you. Compared to what I think is the average level of jealousy, I would say I'm below average. So I'm not that jealous of a person. Mm-hmm. With you. With you. Yeah. Because when I was with my first girlfriend, I would say that my jealousy was much higher. Really? Yes. Oh, wait, I don't, okay, so this is a surprise factor. I did not know that you had this jealous factor to you. Yeah, no, I did. I think, like I said, it's normal for people to go through this. So with my first girlfriend, all of the feelings there were felt by me for the first time. Yeah. So there were times na I didn't even know it was jealousy. That's why I can say really? that now because when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, that was me feeling jealous and acting out. That's why I acted out the way that I did. I mean, it's hard to catch yourself in the moment. Yeah. And usually you have a lot of pride in saying, no, no, I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. Mm-hmm. But when you look back in retrospect and you have a clear and calm head, you're like, I was actually very jealous. And that was how I was acting. And especially when you're at that age. How old were you? 19? Yeah, I was 19 years old. I was in college and my girlfriend was in another school. I guess just hearing that she was hanging out with other guys, which is natural because it's a co-ed college. Yeah, yeah. But just that thought, I would remember it would just trigger feelings in me. And that was jealousy. If you think about it, right? I have a realization. I've also felt this way before. Right? But don't you agree? It is jealousy. Yeah, it, it doesn't is. mean it's bad. I mean, it's normal. Of course, you love your person or crush your person. And you're like, why 
hindi ako yung kasama niya. May ganung feeling. Yeah, and you have, especially during your first one, you feel like you have ownership. Uh-oh. Let's be honest, yeah, diba? Yeah, may, may ganung ano eh. May like, possessiveness talaga eh. You're like, boyfriend ko to, girlfriend ko to. Dapat tayo lang. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I will be honest. I had those feelings. But my pride said, no, this isn't jealousy. I'm just, whatever. But at the end of the day, yung text conversation <laughs> ends up in a fight. Ah, no, talaga? sometimes or an argument or something not particularly positive. You're like, oh, why are you with them? And I'm like, why yeah, Why don't we just have lunch right after school? And yun pala, I'm saying that because I don't want her to hang out with the boys yeah. anymore. Ah, possessive ko pala dati, fofo. <laughs> <laughs> I believe everyone goes through it. Kasi when you first encounter these feelings, you really don't know how to handle it. When I was younger in my past relationship, people would tell me that he was hanging out with someone or they would see him hanging out with a group of people. And the next ko siya, sabi ko, bakit... <laughs> Bakit may kasama ka ibang girls? <laughs> may ganon. So I was like, huh, how do you handle yourself, Megan? Like, medyo cringy now that I think about it. Just thinking of myself being so, like, quote-unquote, possessive with my ex. I'm just like, wow, that was so wrong of you. Why did you have to assume something right away? Wait, is this the first time you're remembering this story? Yes, it is. Because this is the first time I've heard this story. Yeah, I mean, Fofo, we've been together for like almost 10 years. And like little tidbits come out here and there. Okay. <laughs> now, if we move forward to the time that we were together. Oh, yeah. Jealousy is a huge topic in our industry because... Love teams. Love teams abound. You are uh-huh. pretty much forced into a relationship with another person who is usually extremely attractive. And also, you're involved in scenes that can be very intimate. I mean, you're investing emotion, even though it's just your character. Yeah, and you have to be vulnerable. When you're acting, you have to open up to this person. So you're really opening up more than usual to a person who is not your significant other. Also, syempre, di ba, nagkikising scene. Syempre, kung cute naman yung kikising scene mo. <laughs> di ba? Parang, hmm, sino tong kikising scene ko? I guess that brings us to us. Okay, us as a couple. Us as a couple. And us in the showbiz industry and dealing with jealousy. Okay, since I answered first a while ago, Bones, what was your first encounter of jealousy with me? It could be you thought I was jealous or you felt jealous. Are we going to name names or Nona? I, it's up to you. Okay. I'm not stopping you from anything. Well, only because she's our friend and I know that she'll just I laugh mean. about this. So this is the first time that talagang you felt something. Yeah. Like, oh, this is threatening. No, it tumatak talaga tong story na to yeah. sa akin. The story begins with Mikael starting a new show and starting a new love team. And his love team at that time was Andrea. Mikael said one time, yeah, I have a new love team. I just want to get to know her more para we become more comfortable together on the set. And I was like, yeah, that's cool because I've been there. I've done that. No big deal. And then he goes, yeah, hinatid ko nga siya dun sa, ano eh, sa bahay niya. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> I was like, wait, you're not going to talk yet. It's I'm just me. Talking. I'm not talking. <laughs> and I was like, can you just say that again? You made her hatted where? Her house. Sabi niya. I was like, why? Is there a good reason why you wanted to take her home? And he said, well, I just <laughs> thought that, you know, since I was going in that direction anyways, and we were coming from a mall show, I just figured it would be nice so that I could get to know her more and then we could talk. I was like, ah, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to lay it out for you right now. This is how it looks like from the outside. People will see her going in your car. And yes, it's cool because love team nga kayo. But... What I'm worried about is what kind of thoughts are you putting into her head? I think she was single at that time. And I don't want you to put any thoughts into her head like you're taking her home, galante ka, baka isipin niya, may gusto ka sa kanya. And I don't want you to put these kinds of expectations in your love team. I want you to have a goal for it and have a goal for your love team. And if your goal is not to make her lande, then you need to make her aware of that. And Mikael was like, oh, I'm sorry. 
Okay, noted. But can I just say that Bones got a few of the details wrong? Did I? Yeah, so it wasn't coming from a mall show. We were coming from a workshop. I remember clearly we were in Makati. I had my little orange Ford Fiesta. We were going back to GMA. Okay, sorry, but still. Before I even continue, why were you jealous of Andrea? Initially, it was jealousy. I will admit that. I was Ooh. jealous that you were alone with another this girl. This is the first time I've heard that. <laughs> I will admit that I was jealous that you were alone with another girl in your car. And it made me feel at that time very insecure, I would say. Like, bakit kailangan may iba siyang kasama sa kotse? Now, before he did that, why couldn't he just tell me ahead of time? There were thoughts like running through my head. Like, you know, Mikael is very naturally flirty when he talks to people. So, Admittedly. I don't know, did he? He, like touch her leg like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like these are the things that I thought of you know first time kong mananasa to this is like my new boyfriend are, are we gonna break up I don't know <laughs> <There's> <laughs> ako, fo, fo. <laughs> I will admit okay if I'm going to look back at that story Bones is correct in calling me out what I was doing was I was trying to find the balance of Shempre, I wanted to be this to be a successful love team with Andrea. And I think that for the most part, it was extremely successful. Mm-mm. But during that time, it was my first time for everything. First time in showbiz, first time for a love team, first time to be a leading man in a teleserie. I didn't know what was a good balance of relating to Andrea and giving a part of myself to her. Mm-mm. And at the same time, holding back para hindi naman sumobra. Parang you didn't know how you could relate that to her. And like, yeah. this was something that you were used to and that mm-hmm. you would do with your friends. Yeah. And walang mali siya yun. Imagine this na lang. If I had done that and Bones felt all of that, but she didn't say anything, that would be so difficult. Kasi may kinikim-kim siyang galit Mm-mm. at selos. Uh-oh. That would also confuse me. Because I would think because she didn't react that I could do certain things like that. And mm-hmm. you never know, I might have done more. Maybe yeah. I could say, oh, maybe I can take her out or do this. Or like and dinner tayo, ganyan. Kahit, for me, it was wholesome. It was just all work, all business. It's just trying to develop chemistry with my yeah. leading lady. But for Bones, yun pala, she's already building up negativity in her. So I think that was actually huge. You probably saved the relationship at that point. Did I? You never know, di ba? I mean, if you think about it, it was a fork on the road and you had a big decision to talk to me about it or to not talk to me about it. Also, I think like at that point, like we were very new in our relationship, probably like a year, no? Yeah. A year into our relationship. But a pact that Mick and I made when we first got together is that we would be completely honest with each other. I did have a feeling of, should I tell Mikael how I really feel about this? Because I know he only has good intentions. I trusted you with every decision that you made, whether it made me jealous or not. But I felt like I just needed to let you know that you might be putting other people's feelings on the line. I mean, I'm not assuming that, you know, Andrea would have these feelings, but I just didn't want it to possibly get to that point. We also had an agreement where we would not put ourselves in a position where something could happen with a third party. Mm -mm. Of course, it's hard to gauge anong what kind of situations are these? Yeah. But we needed each other's help to be able to figure that out. When I told Andrea, hey, come into my car and I'll take you to GMA. Let's drive there together. I understood the concern that Bones voiced out. And I was putting myself in a possible situation na baka may mangyari sa amin or may maramdaman si Andrea. May mangyari? Diba? You know, you never know. I was opening up that opportunity when it wasn't necessary. I yeah. think yun yun eh. It wasn't yeah. necessary. I think that being able to talk to her during work and relating about our work was enough at that point. Yeah. So that was a step too far. And I'm glad you called me out on it. So after I called you out, obviously you had to rethink on how you were going to approach your love team with Andrea. What are the things that you changed to make it work? I think it was just a more conscious effort to think about how my actions towards Andrea would affect you. Because at that time, I was ultra-focused at work. And all mm-hmm. my moves were directed at work so that this love team could develop chemistry, yeah. a spark for the audience. But I realized that I have to take into account other people who matter to me. I think it was just a more conscious effort. I think there were other things naman that I did na you had to talk to me about or I had to talk to you about. I was like, is this okay or is this too much? Okay. Those were the adjustments that I made 
It was just being more open to you and more open to myself. Na, oh, okay, there are other things that factor into this decision whenever I do something yeah. with my love team. I actually thought you were going to tell a different story. Really? Yeah. Which one? Pero yung jealousy nito was a lot less in oh, magnitude. Oh, okay. Day one mismo of my showbiz career. Oh, oh, okay. So, iba pa to. Iba pa to. I don't know ah! if you guys watched. Ah! <laughs> I remember. We're gonna... Temptation Island was my very, very first project ever. And on my very first scene, my partner was Solen, Hughes We got on the set. The director gave us the script. We looked at it. And it said, no lines, okay? There were no lines. What? No line? Okay, I don't know this. <laughs> Passionate make-out scene. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, wow, no lines. And all I have to do is kiss a girl. I mean, siguro naman kaya ko to. So I just went for it. Oh my God. And it was probably the steamiest kissing scene that I've ever had. People were hyping it up in the news, the media. I saw it all over Twitter. Yes. Oh my gosh, I have never seen this scene in my life. And that is where I think the first sliver of jealousy for Bones was revealed in our relationship. Honestly, I, I didn't want it to get to the point where I would feel jealous. Feeling ko kasi if I watched the kissing scene, I would cry. <laughs> no, she <laughs> would I cry. Would I promise you, she would cry. So jealous because we were so new. And this is ah. really interesting because she had been in showbiz for six, seven years already. Yeah. Ako naman, the way I saw it, business. Because I had to perform. I had to do whatever I had to do. It was very business focused. Like, this is what I have to do and I will do it as well as I can. But also, I had never had a boyfriend in show business. Yes. So I didn't know the feeling. And I was like, kanito pa lang yung feeling na to? Bad trip naman to. <laughs> yeah, so it was super funny kasi yung veterana sa showbiz, she was feeling all sorts of emotions and possible jealous vibes. And me, I was like, but don't you do this? I had to do this and I don't feel anything. Like, I'm okay watching it. I'm okay if you watch it. Like, I had zero shame. It took me a while to understand that, oh, okay, she's really not used to these things after seven years. Yeah, because the thing is, I wasn't jealous of Solen. I mean, I loved her. Like, girl crush ko siya. But at the back of my head, I was thinking, no matter kung sino man tong kahising sin mo, I think it's the fact that you're kissing another girl that makes me feel jealous. Na hindi ako yung kakis mo. I understand that. I understand that. It just caught me by surprise that someone who had been in showbiz for seven years, I thought it was okay na for those in showbiz. Mm -mm. That was my assumption. Okay. So it just surprised me that, oh, okay, not everybody who has been in showbiz for so long is okay with these things. Yeah. Like It still affects them to a certain extent. But anyway, I think it's my turn to share a yes, uh, story. I'm so interested in the to. We were maybe within the first six months, maybe dating or extremely new. There was a guy who messaged a friend of yours. Okay. And wanted to take you out. Oh, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. So let's not name names. Yeah, because we're not too close to it. We're not too close to it. I was with you when you received the message. Yeah, I remember this. I was chill. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then you, you showed me. Pa. When you replied to your friend, you didn't turn her down. Yeah, I remember that. And I was like, oh, wow. I thought like we were cool. I thought we were <laughs> exclusive at that point. And here she was not turning down the guy's offer through her friend. And I was like, oh, wow. So this is how the relationship is going to go. <laughs> you know, that really made me think. Oh, really? It really made me think twice about you. Because if you remember, right before you, I was going out a lot. Yeah, I know. So I, I still had a lot of friends who were asking, hey, that is, let's party, let's go out. Yeah. So in the back of my mind, I was like, Ateka lang, labas kaya ako tonight. <laughs> <laughs> did you think I was malende when I did that? Yeah, yeah. No, I thought you were, I, I, I was like, I thought you had a different conception of a relationship. Because siyempre, I had just gotten to know you, I knew you were in showbiz, and I only knew the sensationalized parts of showbiz life where my cheating and, you know, there are multiple partners. And we weren't close enough for me to bring that up yet. Yeah. I had to make assumptions on my own. And I was like, ganito ba yun? Kasi kung ganito yun, then I gotta adjust. If not, masasaktan lang ako. Alam mo, when that person messaged, I I was very naive to think that it was an innocent thing. I didn't think of it as a date. I thought like, maraming tao. And it was just oh like, God. yeah, super 
super nene. <laughs> super nene talaga. Like, I can only say that I believe that after 10 years of being with Bones. Because if your crush or significant other tells you, ah, hindi, wala, wholesome, naive date lang yan. I'd <laughs> be like, dude, are you crazy? <laughs> Do you not know how guys work? Yeah, Popo knows that I now think that way. <laughs> I am oblivious to yeah. things like that. Yeah, may pagka ignorante talaga si Bones. I, I try to see like the best in people, honestly. Yeah, but that was my first foray into jealousy in this Bones and Fofo relationship. Wow, I don't it was early on. I don't think you've ever mentioned this to me also. Maybe, I, I think I've mentioned it in passing lang, but you didn't really bother about it because yun ngan. It didn't mean, eh. Actually, Fofo, you were kind of cool about the whole situation because if there was somebody else, they'd be like, Confrontational. Yeah, like, why are you texting this other dude? Why are you going to go out on a date with him? I thought we were dating and exclusive. But you were just kind of like, what the freak in your head? But you were already thinking about something else as yeah, a backup so, uh, plan. Yeah, no, I was acting out. So I think people act out in different ways. I think yung confrontation is immediate reaction for most people. Mm -hmm. But since I wanted to keep it cool with you, my emotions manifested in a different way and that was to go out Revenge. and put myself out with others, diba? Yeah, I guess that vengeance emotion that you get when you feel something negative, when you feel jealousy, my outlet, yeah, and it come out in different forms. So for, like I said, one is confrontationally, you say, hey, mo? why are you texting that guy or why aren't you turning that guy down? But for me, it wasn't like that yeah. because I'll admit I was maybe prideful. Oh. That I was like, I don't want to show you that mattered because I didn't know where you were coming from. So I, I have a question though. Did you want to make me feel jealous in return? I don't know. If I try to think back at it, there was definitely some sort of vengeance there. Na, hey, if you do this, I do this. Dapat patas tayo. When I felt jealous, there were so many different emotions that I could have felt and it could have manifested in different ways. Like you mentioned, I could have confronted you. Mm-hmm. And I could have said, why are you messaging him? Why are you even entertaining this guy? But for me, my vengeance or emotion manifested in, oh, if you're going to do that, I'm going to go out with my friends. Because yeah. I was thinking, yeah, a lot of my friends just ask me, hey, let's go out. Let's party. Let's go to the club. <laughs> that was my emotion. And that was equally wrong. Because it was an equally destructive emotion. But I don't toxic. Yeah. Given that situation... I think it's nice to be able to explain to the audience what became our solution. Because mm -hmm. when we think about it, we actually never really had a big fight concerning jealousy. We were able to tackle the emotions and the decision-making which could have made it destructive. Or and could we have were, made it into a big fight. Yeah, we, may, we flattened that out. We and flattened I, the jealousy curve. Yes. That's what I was referring to, actually. <laughs> the secret sauce of Bonizi and Fofo <laughs> is honesty. And just all-out brutal honesty, which is so, so difficult. I mean, I can say it. It's so simple. Be honest. But in practice and execution... It's so hard to do. It's and, so difficult to be honest. But it's the core of our relationship. It is. It is. If our relationship was a building, the foundation, that's just all pure honesty. And even though you actually tell your partner and your partner agrees to be honest, you're not going to be honest right away. It's practice. It requires practice, trial and error. You will stumble. Mm -hmm. But we've decided that we need to be honest about what we feel, our emotions, what we're thinking. And when we do that, you're able to eliminate all these hidden decision-making and feelings na, oh, I want to go out because I saw you entertaining a text. Yeah. And Bonizi could have just opened up and said, oh, no, this is nothing. I'm not even going to mind it. I think it's just a casual thing. It just could have opened up a discussion para wala nang problema yeah. right away. The important thing is to discuss with your partner because, yes, it is hard to be honest with them, but I think if you say things in a calm manner if you have a proper discussion with your partner which you will have to work on together obviously different dynamics and different couples it starts working you just have to deal with the after effects and say okay let's try our best not to make this happen again i think another topic that we can discuss in the future is definitely honesty is the best policy yun yung bala namin 
that was our ultimate weapon against jealousy. Mm -hmm. And that was being honest with one another. Of course, there are more intricacies and nuances in what we used, in how we were being honest. And we'd love to get into that in another podcast. I think what's important is that we're not ashamed of it anymore. Of course, we have a lot more security. We're Mm -hmm. married. But I think it's important for people to look back at those moments because mm-hmm. sometimes even though you're alone and you think about it you're like embarrassed for yourself yeah. but it's when you look back at those moments that you actually learn how to deal with it and you, when you acknowledge it that's the only time you can actually deal with it as we're heading towards the end of this episode there are a couple of myths yeah. relationship myths and jealousy myths which Bones and I would like to discuss maybe debunk or at least analyze I think more of analyze because it's not something that you can really say this isn't true or this isn't the right way to do it because there are different dynamics for different relationships and I think we should analyze it from our perspective all right yeah let's try it out so what is our myth so the myth for jealousy is going through my partner's phone or social media is okay if I suspect cheating or if I'm jealous Okay, before we even analyze this, I want to ask you, have you ever gone through my phone or social media to investigate? Kahit konting hinalang lang. No. Never? Never. You've never looked over while I text? Who's he texting? Well, even if it wasn't real jealousy, just curiosity. You've never done it? Not out of jealousy. Not out of having a feeling that you might be texting another girl never for that like sometimes I'll look through your photos to see what food you ate like on your trip but I don't think that I've ever had that urge to go through your social media you know why you show it to me before I even need to think about looking through it it'll show me if somebody messages you if you message someone I mean even last night you showed me your messages with someone ooh what kind of messages were they a message of appreciation (laughs) (laughs) okay fine I believe it Somewhat. Okay, so wait. I know. Have you gone through my stuff? So I have never gone through your stuff with the first priority being wanting to catch you. Okay. Interacting with a third party. Mm -hmm. But whenever you tell me, hey, can you look for this message? I need you to read something for me. Or hey, can you post something for me? Mm -hmm. Or can you read this tweet? Especially during the start when the story I told about Oh, yeah, 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 the guy. At the back of my head, that would happen. Because I'm already looking at it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to see something that will raise my suspicions. Ah, interesting. Right? Since you know me, I'm super meticulous. Yes. With everything. So when I look at something, even though the reason why I'm looking at it is very innocent. Oh, uh, Fofo, can you text someone Mm -hmm. for me? Pero pagbukas ko ng inbox mo, what if I see something suspicious? What if there's an unknown number that was, hey, what's up? Wait, pinapangunahan mo ba yung sarili mo doon? No, no, no. I think it was just my natural way of thinking. Okay. I think about everything as soon as you give me one Every piece possibility. of stimulus. Yeah. Right? You give me anything and I'll think of all the possibilities and that's really just the way I think. <laughs> Can I just say that Mikael looking through messages is... <laughs> but he doesn't do it because like he's looking for like things but he does this to like okay, let me make wait, let me let okay. me finish let me finish ginagawa niya to sa mga kapatid niya he looks for messages of the messaging like girls so that he can make fun of them can and I clarify them. can I clarify this you make it seem like I get their phones <laughs> <laughs> okay you didn't tell the whole story I will clarify <laughs> Bones is right but she's not telling the whole story pag may katabi ako my eyes wander a lot I'm not hoping to look at their phones pero mabilis rin magbasa yung mata ko I don't know why hindi ko naman sinasadya pero pag nabasa na ng mata ko na process na ng utak ko ano magagawa ko I can't forget or unsee I have kwento Mikael told me that he saw a castmate's phone and there was something juicy I'm not gonna say which show he saw this on but he saw a juicy text from a castmate what happened? okay tell, tell me the text I don't so I, no I no I don't remember what the text was. Basta, what kind of juicy? What was it? Pro, what is it uh, referring like, to? Like, parang may nilalandi siya na, na ano? Pero may significant other siya. Wala. Oh, y- no. Yung castmate mo yung wala. 
yung ka-text niya meron. Oh, okay, okay. Guys, if you are beside Mikael, make sure that you do not text racy messages beside him or else he will see it and obviously I will find out also. Yeah, and you might come out on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, just like tonight. <laughs> All right. But anyway, let's let's just go back to the myth. Okay. You and I don't really have that quality. I think it's yeah. safe to say we don't have that urge to look because of jealousy. Mm-hmm. But do you think it's okay? Hmm. The question, is it okay if they have a reason? Yeah, I mean, answer. Well, however you want to feel like answering. Nahirapan si Bones. Oo, nahirapan ako, honestly. Kasi I believe in giving people space. And I want to give people the benefit of the doubt all the time. So if this was a situation na may hinala ako sa'yo. Then and it's okay? No, no, no. If my hinala ako sa you and your phone was there, then I would not look through it first because I have that respect for you. And I would ask you first and okay, ask around. I will simplify for you I because I, you're going around the question and I really just want to hear a yes or no. Okay. Is it okay for any reason to go through your partner's phone without them knowing? Is there a reason that it would be okay? Can you answer this? No, I want you to answer. That's why. Because I have an answer. I want you to answer because I'm curious what you're thinking and I'm wondering why you're having a hard time. Okay, so I this, is, this is the first time that Bonizi is having a really difficult time answering a question on the podcast. I'm interested. I think you guys would be interested okay. as well. I have, so I it's have a yes answer. or no question. I have an answer. Okay, I have go. an answer. My answer is yes, it's okay. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Okay, wow. Yes, it's okay. Because... What you do with the information that you find, whether it's if you find out that your partner is really cheating on you or you don't find out anything, it's about how you use the information that you have and how you're able to tackle that situation. Yes, there are factors like privacy of your partner, like you don't want to break that trust of them finding out that you look through their stuff. But what is your intention? Is it to find out the truth? Is it to break this person down so for me it's about what you use with the information that you have Bonizi we got a problem really oh yeah we have a problem we I, I uh, at my core no really vehemently no because I feel like what you said if I'm going to simplify that the end justifies the means and when you say that line, it means it is okay to do something wrong because the end is going to be all right. And if you take that notion and idea to the extreme, it's okay to take a life because the end result will be better. Oh, that sounds bad. I think I just really made a bad decision right now. Yeah, but no, it's okay. I think it's fine. I'm happy you made a decision. But I want to share my opinion on it. If you want to keep your decision, that's okay. For me... You don't justify a wrong deed because the end is going to be good. Okay. I think that that is wrong. I think that you need to be able to follow a path where you're not invading the freedom and privacy of anybody. Okay. So the alternative that I see with your situation is being honest. Let's say may hinala ka. You said may hinala ka. That makes it okay because you'll be able to talk about it. You're right. I should have asked you about it first. You should just go direct to the person. Yeah. Because if you go through that and then you talk to the person, so the person, let's say, is cheating, but the person now has a problem with you because you invaded yeah. privacy. But so now you have two problems instead of just one. But you could have been the better person. Like, yeah. always be the better person in the situation, no matter how heartbreaking it is. Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad. How dare you? What kind of person ah, did I marry? Wait, can I just change my decision? <gasps> no. <laughs> if I made me realize something right now. <laughs> Are you the angel and am I the devil in this relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with that? It's okay if you don't agree with me. I completely me. agree. Bonizi is crying, okay? I, can you look at the camera? <laughs> She's crying. I feel so bad. It's okay. I mean, like I said, it's impossible for people to think holistically about any issue. Even me, like there are certain times when I don't consider all the factors, which is why having a partner, having people important around you to help you make these decisions, I think 
that's part of growing and that's part of life. Okay, I have a follow-up question. Okay, go. Okay, so the reason why some people snoop around is because even if they did go to their partner, eh, so how will you get the truth? Because, course, because people will ask that. Yes, and people will do that. Yeah. People will deny, people will lie. But I firmly believe that if you can maintain your honesty, even though there are many times that it will hurt, you will find out that this person is not for you. I hear that. It's but hard. It is hard. It definitely is hard. I don't think anybody ever said that being honest is easy. And we told, we said that the difficulties are definitely there. Yeah. But if this person is lying to you in so many ways and with such important topics, then he or she is probably lying to you with other things as well. And that is probably affecting you negatively. And it's on you and your friends to let you know na, hey, this isn't going the way you want. You need to be able to detach. Yeah. When you think about it, you've seen it. You have friends who are like super ignorant. They're like, no, he loves me or no, she loves me. But it's so clear to you, he doesn't or she doesn't. Mm -mm. He's playing you. So you as a friend have to go up to her and say, hey, this is what's really happening. This topic was always so difficult because yun nga, there's just so many angles that you can attack. There's so many the angles, topic. so many different lifestyles, different upbringings, different principles that people follow. There's not one way of really doing things. But I think these are principles that Mick and I really try to help or enforce in our relationship. And I mean, even just now, we disagreed on something, but Mikael was able to explain the better side of it. And it made me realize now, oh yeah, there is a better way of doing things. Thanks, yeah. Fofo. Cool. And on that note, I think we can end this podcast, which was very, very interesting. I hope you guys all really, really enjoyed it as well. It's nice to go back to relationship topics for behind relationship goals. It was refreshing, to be honest. I know. I kind of miss talking about relationships and going in a deep dive and having that little teary-eyed moment. <laughs> yes, but otherwise, thank you so much to everybody who's listened and watched. And stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you again on Bye. <laughs> Bye. That was cute. <laughs> <laughs>